Okay. Good evening. Welcome to the Brookfield Board of Selectmen's meeting for August 16th, 2022. Please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so we are going to start um, with um, formal recognition of some of the, one of the longest standing members of our contributing portion of Brookfield's community today. <laughs> I'd like to take this moment to remind everybody to silence your devices, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, I just want to say this, this is, this is um, a recognition that's well deserved. Um, and I'd like to ask Adam to share just a little bit of Chief Martell's um, experience and service so far to the town. Mm -hmm. It's quite lengthy, but I'll read it. Uh, so tonight uh, we congratulate uh, Chief Peter Martell on his years of service to the town of Brookfield. Uh, in his career, uh, Chief Martell has served in many capacities, including, there are many, uh, Civil Defense Director uh, in 1985 at the age of 18, which was reportedly the uh, youngest in the state at the time, uh, EMS in February of 1986, EMT November 1986, Firefighter, February of 1988, uh, was one of the original members of the Board of Directors of the Municipal Run Regional Dispatch Center in 1989, uh, which was eventually taken over by the State Police in 1994. Uh, EMS Captain since June of 1991. Paramedic since February of 1995, the second paramedic in Brookfield. Uh, has been full-time since July of 1999. Uh, he has his associate's degree in fire science uh, from May of 1993, has been captain or was captain uh, starting in January 1995, chief uh, since June of 1997, and he is also currently the emergency management director. Uh, and as uh, seen throughout the town and by the gathering today, uh, Chief Martell is well known uh, well respected uh, by all those who have interacted with them as well as those who just know of him um, and hear of the name and hear of the Brookfield uh, Fire De and EMS departments. Uh, we again congratulate you on your dedication to the town and departments and wish you many more good years of service to the town. And, uh, just this is, with this there's a certificate as well as a memento for 25 years as chief. All right, so. people who not just with your involvement but your willingness to to bear forward the history as well as have some vision for where we need to go as a community so I just want to thank you for, for all you've done thank you. getting getting some of us new folk on board sure. so. um, I'm gonna lose the source in a minute but I figure what to attribute but what a long strange trip it's been <laughs> um, it's Started out simple enough, just wanted to help out. Um, you know, over the years, all the faces that I'm looking at, um, and a lot more that have, that have lost a few, gained quite a few. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do this without the people that have served under me, served with me, been there for me, um, in the field, in this room, everywhere. It's it's been an honor. Um, patience all the time. Oh, when are you retiring? When are you stopping? And I just bah. That's, <laughs> that's it. Um, and not really, the newer EMTs will still kind of groan because we'll show up on they'll show up on scene without me or some of the other senior members. Oh, where are they? Where, where's Pete? Where's Donna? Well, there are other people on the squad. It just it's part of it. But it's a double-edged part of working in your hometown. The town you love is. You're serving the people that you know, you're, you're townspeople, but at the same time, as you lose them, it's, it's a bit out of you. But I wouldn't trade her for anything. It's, I don't know how much more I've got to go, but 
here we are. So thank you. Thank you. I think it really, it's this level of support, um, it's nice to see it for a happy reason. But let me just put it that way. It's really, it's awesome to be able to come out and celebrate as a group, right? And, and recognize the hard work, the service, the contribution, and, and really the, the mentorship, right? I mean, um, like you said, you've been doing this for a long time. There's a number of there's a number of experienced faces in this group, but there's a number of younger faces in this group that are kind of the future of, of the uh, um, paramedic and fire service for Brookfield. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of it. Um, there's not a lot of communities that can claim that. And a lot of that, you know, they, they say people like, they take jobs, but they leave managers, right? Um, we're one of the communities that still has a, has a relatively uh, thriving service with regards to the volunteerism with our firefighters and our paramedics. So, thank you for what you do. Thank you. And, and it's up to y'all if you want to watch all the exciting stuff that we will do after this. So. It is great. Thank you, guys. Okay. So that was the most important announcement we had. Uh, we do have a number of other announcements. Uh, one of them it has to do with the uh, openings that we have on. Um, uh, predominantly employment opportunities as well as committee openings. So let me start with the committee openings. Uh, I spoke a little bit about volunteerism and how we have a very, we do have relative to other small communities, a relatively strong level of willingness to serve for EMT and fire. One of the areas where we're struggling like many communities is for uh, the volunteer uh, staffed committees. Um, some of those include the advisory committee. We have two openings out of the seven positions. For the cable advisory committee, we have two openings as well. Uh, capital improvement planning committee, we have four openings. Uh, conservation commission, and, and this is really difficult because we had, we had rebuilt conservation commission um, and they did a lot of good work, but we are now down to two people on Conservation Commission, and that's one that we really need functioning for, um, really for us to be able to do the day-to-day -day business. I mean, fundamentally... As it stands now, we do not have a committee that can act because we have voted a seven-member committee, mm -hmm. and two is not a quorum. We need a minimum of two volunteers before the Conservation Commission can do anything. Okay. And so, as it stands, if anybody applies to the town, they have to wait 21 days because there's no one who has the authority to act, then appeal the non-action to DEP and wait for DEP who has then a 90-day turnaround. So this is, is going to be detrimental to anyone who is seeking conservation sure. approval of a project because it's going to be, you know, A yeah. very very long road to get any any action, so it would be really wonderful if anyone could step up for Concom. For Concom, yeah. Okay. So, um, so fundamentally, if we were going to focus on one particular space, that's the one that we need in order for mm -hmm. us to be able to do business. Okay. Um, Council on the aging. We do have one opening. Ah. Maybe not, because Maybe not. the wonderful Miss Mary Lee Knight has offered to be on that committee. Have you really? Outstanding. 
So I guess the next meeting will be doing the appointment. It has been sent to uh, be put, placed on the agenda. Yes, yeah, she said it. I ran to the office and put it on the agenda. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Let me know if you want to read 21 pages of, uh, of uh, wetlands uh, documentation as well. <laughs> Did you give the t-shirt back? <laughs> okay. Uh, we've got the Historical Public Records Committee two openings, uh, Local Public Access Committee six openings, uh, Quaybog Valley Community Development Representative one, uh, Source Water Protection Committee 7 um, and Zoning Board of Appeals 1. Uh, and then for employment opportunities, this is these are paid positions um, within the town. Um, we've got the All Boards Clerk. Uh, the Highway and the All Boards Clerk is a 15 hour a week position Tuesday through Thursday. Uh, applications are open until the position is filled um, and uh, anybody who would be interested in that should submit a letter of interest and resume to the town administrator at town administrator at brookfieldma.us and the job description is available under employment opportunities at brookfieldma.us we've got a position for a full-time highway worker uh, that is also open until filled uh, those job applications should go to highway at brookfieldma.us or call 508-867-8357. Uh, um, again, the job description is on our under employment opportunities on our website. And then we are looking for two full-time police officers. Uh, that uh, Those um, uh, resumes and cover letters or letters of interest should go to Chief Blanchard at mblanchard at brookfieldma.us or call 508-867-5570. Uh, and we are an equal opportunity affirmative action employer. Uh, we assure you that your opportunity for employment with the town will be based only on your merit with, without regard to race, religion, sex, age, national origin, or disability, unless there's a explicit physical requirement for the job that can't be accommodated. So um, those are our announcements for today. Um, we have the warrants that were signed. Um, the first one was for um, 713.22 for $115.05. Uh, an additional wa warrant was a correction for 713.22 for negative $227.20. We have an expense warrant for 726.22 for $316,620 dollars and 24 cents we have a payroll warrant for 726.22 for 204 773 dollars and 76 cents uh, withholding warrant for 727.22 for 72,153 dollars and 61 cents expense warrant for 8922 for 127,687 dollars and 93 cents a payroll warrant for 81022 for 155,032 dollars and 41 cents and then a withholding warrant for 81022 for 27,379 dollars and 14 cents and, and so that's the report on the warrants and so we're going to move on to new business the first being the senior center report from our citizen action committee uh, Mr. Eaton, would you care to come on up? Uh, if you have the letter, uh, if you go to the second page, uh, I just want to acknowledge publicly the 13 people, Sally Brown, Barbara Clancy, Rudy Heller, Pat King, Mary Lou Knight, Megan Metz, Lois O'Leary, Brenda Parrish, Bill Simpson Jr., Clarence Schneider, Don Taff, and Brenda Turner. They uh, worked diligently over three months during the summer, when it's kind of tough to get people to come to meetings. Every week we had a meeting. Uh, and I'm 
convinced that most of those people on that committee were committed to going forward to the select board making a recommendation or suggestion that they put together appoint a committee to look at the feasibility of building a senior center at Hayden Lincoln Street extension or some other site uh, but most of those people were committed to that including me but after that after those meetings uh, they investigated 19 sites as possible location, including Hayden and Height and the uh, Lincoln Street Extension. And uh, that group visited seven senior centers in the area, had intensive interviews with those senior centers, and found out what, what programs work best, what's the best business design, uh, what it cost to run a senior center, very thorough interviews and after those sessions they come to the realization we probably had the cart before the horse we need to really focus on creating and implementing programs that are adaptable or acceptable to seniors rather than building a structure uh, So, um, they, we also recognize that if we're not going to build a structure, we need a place to congregate. And one of the, at the, one of the latter meetings, the Congregational Church offered their site, uh, the basement of the Congregational Church, initially every Tuesday morning for a site, potentially to expand that. That location can accommodate over 70 people. It has a full functioning kitchen. It won't be disruptive to the town hall where we're trying to do business activities here, uh, where people are walking past seniors having their t toenails clipped or, or right. doing Tai Chi or whatever. So uh, that was a great, and so I'd like to acknowledge the Congregational Church for making that offer. Uh, one of the people on the committee uh, documented that we have at that time 1089 seniors in this town over 60 years old about a third of our population uh, they have made a significant financial contribution to this town you talk about volunteerism before they've also been a significant part of our volunteer corps. So I think, uh, to briefly summarize, uh, I hope that the select board, the financial committee, the town, will not only give the moral support, but the financial support uh, to uh, the Council on Aging, the new director as they move forward to trying to create programs for uh, this most deserving segment of our community if you got any questions but uh, I think they did an extraordinary job I think we made the right suggestion it's up to you guys to decide what you're gonna do but but uh, if you have any questions I'll be happy to answer them. and by the way very very happy to have Mary Lou Knight participating in the Council on Aging. She has been, during these conversations we've had, she has been uh, an asset as well as Don, too. So they're a good team. So, first of all, thank you to you and to everybody who put the effort in. Um, I think we, we gained a lot from um, making it an independent action committee and giving you all the freedom to to go do the work and come back with a recommendation. Um, and, you know, functionally what it sounds like, it sounds like we're taking the right steps, just we have the right vector, just maybe not the right velocity given how much of the town is seniors, right? Yeah. So we've gotten by with volunteers and the Council on the Aging for a number of years. We're 
entering a period where we've just now got our first, you know, uh, director mm -hmm. on board. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it's one of those items, and, and I think we've even had a similar conversation with the folks who are, who are supporting the, the foundation anniversary, is that if we have the content that we know we need to support, then we can plan the budget around the content, right? So, and it's one of those chicken or eggs things, and you're, you've been on the financial committees, so you know, you know, you have to have the plan in order to then fund the plan. So I think by having the new director, by trying to reinvigorate the, the question of what do the seniors need and the work that you all did, it, it provides that framework for us to go say, okay, what are those services we need to offer? What's the resources required to offer those services, right? So. Um, and, and I think that, that this is a good starting point. So what, what I can commit to is, is fundamentally, so long as, as the director and the council on the aging come forward with a plan and, and we identify what those resources are that we need and execute against the plan, then there's no reason for us not to, not to allocate what we need to. We should. You know? Yeah. So, um, we but we have to start by having the, yeah. you know, what, what does it need to look like? And I really appreciate what the, you know, the fact that the Congregational Church has been a good neighbor in terms mm -hmm. of supporting the community, um, you know, f for for these type of, like, activities that are just good, be being good neighbors and being part of the community. So it's, yeah. it's awesome that they're willing to, to share that resource with us. So. Well, you got a good core of people that are interested. Right. We should lean on them a little bit. And, uh, Absolutely. and the Council on Aging, so. But I, I, I gotta tell you, I was impressed by uh, the group, and I, I gotta reiterate that, because uh, we had a mindset that we were gonna build a senior center. Gonna build it and they'll come, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 they, they will come. They, and we, we did a study in 2017, said let's build one, you know? And, yeah. But it's not, you gotta have a good program. Right. And the data we collected on, on the siting, the data we collected on what what's a good senior center do and what works well, whether it's communications, it's data data collection, uh, so forth, is invaluable to the people as we move forward with the program. The other thing I'd like to say is I'd never been in a senior center, believe it or not, before this. Uh, I was, quite frankly, uh, impressed and startled about the magnitude of the work that's the required, to, mm -hmm. yeah, whether it's financial, whether it's data collection, whether it's working with volunteers, uh, how do you get money from the supporting communities like the Lions Club, all those things, it, it's, it's a complex process. So they're gonna, they're gonna, the Council on Aging and the new director is going to have a challenge. Right. So your support is what they need. Right. So Thank you for your time. Thank you. Right, so we have a comprehensive emergency management plan for review today. And this is not the plan. Not the plan. No, the I believe Peter emailed the plan to you at one point. It's been. Um, reviewed it's a it's an update of the previous emergency management plan the states and, and different things changed okay so it's just it's just making it current to meet the state standards right um, have we scheduled a time to go over the plan with um, any key players within the community the emergency management plan? No, yeah. that would that would be um, Peter. That would his emergency management director. That would be his function. Okay. Could you just ask him? Sure. When when they're scheduled to review the update with the at least the department heads, I would think, and then any criti any critical players in the plan fundamentally. Okay. I I believe this plan is more of an Resource. action plan for emergency response in disaster mm -hmm. situations. 
Right, but so, some of it, but so typically... So the department heads, although I'm sure would be interested, I don't see what the tax collector, the assessor, and the treasurer okay. would, so would I was fundamentally being, I was being, have anything. I was being a little too broad okay. in my term. <laughs> I was thinking okay. more department heads in terms of fire, highway, police. It was sent to all of them to review before it was submitted for your signature. Right. So, but you want him to meet with them too? What I'd kind of like is, is, and it may be part of the plan, and shame on me because I, I recall getting it. I don't know that I got all the way through it. Um, it, it's a bias towards the sand table. When you publish a, a document like this, you at least do a, at least a single face-to-face walkthrough with everybody that, okay. that has a role that's within the confines of the organization. Because okay. people can email them and they can say, yeah, I read it, it's, I'm okay with it, but doing even like an hour-long dry run where we say, hey, tornado hits, you know, Here's who. Here's who's on first. Has some value. So I would just like if we're adopting it, I would like us to do a a, a dry run fundamentally. Okay. So just put it on the calendar. Even if it's like once a quarter, we get together and talk about a different disaster, or we do it at. Even if it's only of mild interest, maybe at the tail end of a department head meeting, we we keep everybody after class that that has a role in it for like fifteen or twenty minutes, and we go over. I like one. that idea because they're a captive audience. Right, so they're coming anyway, so so we can, and then anybody who wants to stay, even if they're not, like, even if they, they're not a key player, right, um, if they know what the plan is and they have the resources and the capability, a lot of those plans include leveraging, like, knowledgeable volunteers in the community. Okay. I'll give you an example. I'm sure our assessor doesn't have a role, but I'm sure if, if the creek started to rise. I think that Al would be there with a truck and a shovel and sandbags if we he asked him to. Absolutely would. Okay. And I don't think we'd even have to ask him. Right. As long as he knew where to show up. There. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. fundamentally, let's let's maybe incorporate into the tail end of the department. Yeah, that's meetings, a great just idea. Going over a little little bit of a, a sand table run with it. So, um, can I get a motion to adopt that comprehensive emergency management plan? I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the comprehensive emergency management plan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go. And this is where we say that we've reviewed it and acknowledged our, our department's role in it. So looks like the the only signatures on here is us. Um, the fire chief and the police chief. I would have expected highway because I would expect that there are times when their equipment resources are pretty I think this, this is set up through the state, okay. so the signatures are what the signatures are, but if not, I'll make sure. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, great. So that is, that is at least incorporated there. Uh, next item is possible appointment of ca uh, cable studio coordinator, uh, Matthew de Cicero. So you have Mr. de Cicero's information in your packets. Yep. Yep. Um, he is not him. Oh. <laughs> or de Cicero, I'm sorry. De Cicero? Oh, yep. sorry. Yep. I, I don't attempt names, I'm not good at that, uh, so I just go with what I hear. Um, he is very qualified for the position. The position's been advertised for a month. He is the only applicant. Fortunately for us, he is extremely qualified. qualified. Um, we determined at the personnel board, meaning that it was a grade four. We did not set a salary at that time because we didn't have the chart with us to figure out where it would fall. Um, but after doing a little bit of uh, review, I'm thinking $24 an hour, that it's between 19 and 26. Okay. And we can bump it up to 26. It will, it will shorten the number of hours available. I don't know how we want to set the hours for this position. If there are a set number of hours, or just work as many hours as you can until we get caught up and then level out, 
Yeah, I would think that this that's is, what we want to do. This is what your total hours within the year, within this confine, so we need you to keep track of those and we'll pay you accordingly, work right. at your own pace. Please get this done within set deadlines. I'm not sure. We don't have a cable committee, right. so there isn't really a cable committee for this person to report to, so they would be reporting to, to you. Um, and so those are parameters that we need to set. And if you're amenable to the hourly rate, if you want to choose one, we can offer Mr. DeCiro the position. He met with Sharon and went over the studio with her. Um, and he seems to be a good fit. Okay. Is 24, do we know, is 24 in line with what Broomfield is paying? Um, actually, he didn't say what Brimfield was paying, so I, I have no idea. Okay. Um, because that seems like a seems like an appropriate level to start at. Hmm. Um, I'm not I'm not really familiar. I'm not familiar with because no one applies for these positions. It's hard to know. Yeah. Right. Um, cable is not something that is, I believe, going to be around for much longer as reflected in the cable contracts yep. where yes. it's based on user fees so the funding isn't but necessary. then but then but we're we, gonna, but then we're going to have to figure out as a community the streaming you know the aspect, streaming aspect and the different technologies right. so so um, it's going to just shift yes, responsibilities it's, it's, are essentially going to shift over to more like sort of cable coordinator in a way it'll so, be more of a streaming it, yeah it's more like yeah, live streaming yeah. coordinator in a sense right yeah Telecommunications. So, yeah, kind position. of. Yeah. Um, Except without the tele. tele. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a media. <laughs> yeah, media, yeah. media communi communications media manager, director. Media, yeah. media, man media manager. Well, yeah. but anyway, be that yeah. as it may. So right. we need we need a salary set by you, the board, which will then be presented to the personnel board. How many hours is it? Depends on how much you want to pay. Him. Oh, okay. I don't know if there was already a set hour. We have no because we because there's a lot of of initial work. There's a lot of setting work. saying you know you're going to work ten hours a week. Then, right, finding so, out that in order to catch up, he needs twenty hours a week for the first right. three months, and then it's going to be seven hours a week after that. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'd rather see it this much time within a year or this much salary within a year at this rate, mm -hmm. these are the hours that you have available and use them right. as appropriate. Yep. Right? Because town meeting might take up a heck of a lot more time. Right. And editing and so, putting all the YouTube videos, the videos up take, on YouTube is going to be very um, labor intensive as well. Especially so. the upfront part of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so it's going to be loaded on the front end. So for the... So for the grade, the grade has a range of 19 to 26. Correct. So I think coming in at 24 at a starting point, it, given 13 years of experience and uh, what appears to be his, his, his other credentials, I think that's a, a good recommendation. What do, you, what do you think? Yeah. Okay. So do you want to make a motion to... Um, Approve his appointment conditionally at twenty-four dollars an hour, with uh, pending the approval of the personnel board. Yeah, I'll make a motion to. Uh, what is it? Appoint him. Uh, to, to appoint uh, Matthew DeCiro as the cable studio coordinator at a rate of twenty-four dollars an hour, pending the uh, personnel board review. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then um, that equates out to approximately 833 hours for the fiscal year. Okay, so that's that's um, that actually works out well because that keeps it below the what is it like 980? That well, if it was a full year, it would be 16 hours a week. But we're we're right. going to be three months in before he starts. Right. So we've got okay. July, August, and. We're going into September, mm -hmm. so yeah. it, it it won't exceed the full time mark. Right. That's, that's but he has a full time job, which he has every intention of keeping. So I don't right. anticipate that he will. That's be, a problem. This is a second. That second he job. will be mm -hmm. um, able to to devote that kind of time. Right. Okay. Great. 
But at least that wiggle room is there, should extra time be needed. Mm -hmm. Which is good. Okay, great. So, and if he needs more hours, and we can we can always because this is cable access money. This is not tax dollars. At this time, we can then appropriate a larger time slot for next year right. using cable access money. Yep. Right. So great. Okay, that's done. Next item is um, fishing derby restrictions for the boat ramp. Yes. So I'm going to say skip, Nelson, skip. because I don't know is Carlin's first name. Yes. Carl. Okay. Thank you. Came to me and was, had noted that during fishing events and in general down at the. Um, on, the people are power loading their boats, which is scrubbing out right. the subsurface at the base of the ramp, mm -hmm. which is creating a drop. Mm -hmm. So the people are backing in, their trailers are dropping, their vehicles are dropping into the lake because of the um, degradation of the, of the uh, okay. base of the ramp. So what he had suggested he, first, he informed me that, that it's illegal to uh, power load your boat onto your trailer um, in Massachusetts because it undermines the ramp and digs big holes in the lake bottom at the ramp's edge. And this, this is an email from him. Because power loading seems to be the practice of many, not all fishermen, it may help to reduce the practice if the tournament organizers are asked to, or required to police the ramp as a requirement or condition of the permit that they seek from the town of Brookfield to have a tournament. And he said that he expects that many fishermen don't even realize that power loading can be a problem or that it's actually illegal. And the tournament organizers may just have to let them know that to, to prevent it. So he suggested the following language be added to fishing derbies for the town as a permanent restriction that you must inform all participants that power loading your boat onto the trailer is not allowed and is illegal in Massachusetts. Um, so that is basically what this is about and he would like to ask that you please move to add that language as a permanent restriction to uh, fishing derbies. Do we know, is that a true statement that power loading is illegal in Massachusetts? I do not know if that is a true statement. I did not research that. Okay. Yeah, we, what was that again, please? That power loading is, is power loading legitimately illegal in Massachusetts? Yes, it is. It's actually posted at the boat ramp. Okay. Uh, it's part of the uh, Fish and Wildlife Boater Access requirements. Okay. Uh, so it is It is on their side. So it, that, that would be in compliance with... Uh, yep. So I think we can put it right up there with no literary. Please police the area after you... I think the only current statement we have on our permits is to police your trash after the event. Yes, for ice fishing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. What would happen to any permits that have already been issued? Issued. It wouldn't apply to that? Well, well it, I mean, it's it, actually, it does because it's, it's on the sign. If it's actually on the sign at the boat yeah. ramp, I find it a little frustrating that we even have to go through this. But it's yeah. an additional reminder to the organizers to police their people. Yeah. I mean, and I so. think that's, I don't think that's a problem. I don't think but that's an unreasonable be. request at no. all. No. So, um, I think it's a reasonable request. Uh, however, you're, that's only reaching those that are requesting a special use permit. Uh, there are more and more larger boats, which are harder to float than the bass boats that are there every day. So it really requires for access to step up and ensure that the people that are using the state boat are following their very own regulations. So, so, so you're recommending we contact the state and warn them that this is happening? Uh, and to be honest with you, they've been down there twice this year, which is the first time I've seen that happen um, uh, in quite some time. Normally, they might show up and sit in their truck. This year, they actually did uh, monitoring of, of boaters. Uh, at one Sunday morning, there were probably a dozen boats waiting to be launched as, as they inspected them. Mm. And I think that's, a, that, that's great. Uh, 
and yes, yeah, a state boat ramp, and they should monitor their own their own uh, ramp. Yeah. So, so I, wonder, I think that's. I wonder how many ramps are actually usable at the state in the drought as well. Ooh. And if that is. Like if it is one of the few that's maybe still usable, that it's just the extra traffic is just going to cause extra damage. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. It just if it's if that's one of the few ramps maybe still usable because of the drought conditions around here. If that's why the extra we're traffic, boats. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're maybe seeing bigger boats, which will then cause additional damage. No, which I, it just kind of escalates. Cell Pond is getting some very big boats. Yeah. There was a probably a 24 footer up there the other day and Mason's me that they could get it off the trail. <laughs> wow. Probably they could That's get it off crazy. the trail because they've scoured the end of the ramp. So, oh, so it does yeah. drop off. Yeah. But uh, that and jet skis and the, really, really they have to power on almost from the jet ski. Yep. Right. Okay. All right, so I think we can add that verbiage. Do we need a vote to add it, or is the discussion sufficient? You, you should actually vote to yeah. add that to, to all Derby um, applications going forward. I'll make a, mo a motion that we add the verbiage as read and according to the sign that's posted at the ramp, that we add that to all applications for uh, special use permits. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, next one is um, signing the state primary warrant. Or are we just ratifying the signatures on that? Okay. Uh, so Adam didn't sign. That's why I was kept on the agenda. Ah, okay. Oh. Okay. Sign. Okay, so can I get a motion to sign the uh, state primary warrant? I'll make a motion that I sign the state primary warrant. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so the next item is uh, signed cemetery deeds. We've got um, uh, lot 13C, uh, lot 31, section E, lot 15, section E um, of Brookfield Cemetery. So can we get a motion to uh, sign the three cemetery deeds? I'll make a motion that we sign the three cemetery deeds as read. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Beth, yeah, it took me a minute to find this, but anyway, uh, here are the boat regulations, the state boat regulations, and rule number uh, 19. Load or unload power watercraft onto or about the power boat trailer by means of propeller systems is a violation of posted Oh, now I know what that is. I didn't know what power loading was until you read that description by using the propellers. Thank you. That's what I get for assuming, but for once I was right. <laughs> okay. So, um, can I get a motion to delegate authority to um, Kelly, the town administrator, to sign con any contracts previously discussed by the by the board. I'll make a motion that we uh, delegate authority to town administrator Kelly A. Robbins to sign contracts as previously or to sign contracts previously discussed by the board. I'll second it, and just for conversation. So fundamentally, anything that we've discussed and at least voted in the affirmative. If, even if we don't have the paperwork in front of us, Correct. so long so, as the contract is in line with what the intent of the vote was. Yes, those are the ones. Um, for instance, the CDBG grant for Green Street has been discussed repeatedly at meetings, and mm -hmm. we applied for the grant, and now it's a matter of following through on going out, doing the RFQ, going out to bid, making sure that you know things are in line with, in what, line with what, what the project is, right. rather than having them wait. So for instance, if this meeting had been canceled, we don't have one next week or the week after, or the week after. The, the, so it would be four was, weeks before you could sign the contract. This will just alleviate that that's, time gap. That type of time gap, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. so, so that we can actually do business in the town. In a timely manner. In a timely manner? Yes. Outstanding. All right. Uh, so do we need to vote? 
We do. So we did the motion in a second. I don't, I did the conversation actually where it belonged after the motion <laughs> for a change. Sorry, I was trying to get it procedurally no, right. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So let's go ahead and um, we've got the CDBG FY21 CDF invoice, mm -hmm. uh, which is. Um, bottom line total of $5,651.98 for um, labor relative to, this one was the... This is the Green Street Project. Green Street Project, yep. All right, can I get a motion to uh, sign that? Yep, I'll make a motion that we sign uh, the CDBG FY21 program invoice. All right, second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have, looks like we're making some traction on minutes. So we've got the select board minutes of 614, uh, 75, 62, and 727. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve those select board minutes uh, as we're read and are noted. All right, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we've got uh, the electric contract offering. Um, and Kelly, you were going to kind of take a point on that. In, in light of what's going on with um, energy and uh, fuel supply chains, I thought it would be a good idea to lock in a price for the town's energy use. So electricity and natural gas. I'm working with a broker from Yulon Energy, and he went out to bid on behalf of, of Brookfield. They came back with a three-year contract to begin in February because we needed to loop the school in to get the lower rate because of their usage, and they're in a contract that expires in February. Okay. So it'll start in February, it'll be 36 months, and it will be 0 0.16407 cents per kilowatt hour. We currently pay approximately 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Yep. It's anticipated at this time that it will go up to 25 cents. Yep. So we're rolling the dice on the next six months um, okay. before the contract will take effect. I would like to lock the price in just because between the time they gave me the original, they're like, well, you can sign it. I said, no, I'm not signing this. This is for the selectmen to sign. They need to hear about this and discuss it, and they need to be on board with this. Well, the rates are gonna change. You gotta sign it right now. I said, I, I'm aware the rates are gonna change and the answer is still no. no. <laughs> so they re-quoted today. They will hold the quote until tomorrow morning if you're willing to accept the 16 cents. It was 12 cents when they sent it to me before. So every day we wait is, 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 it goes up. It goes up. is, it, is gonna be an issue. Um, the national natural gas energy there um, they gave us 54 cents for what the heck is the term i have to think of the term that we used it should be my, my paperwork somewhere that i actually just brought out here um that one's that's i think that's a typo but they put it in a contract Fifty-four cents. Fifty-four cents. That's so. Um, oh, what? I feel like it's supposed to be five dollars and forty cents. For I, the term, give me a second. I gotta find the terminology. Um, put that that's here. crazy. I just had it a second ago. One moment, please. <laughs> probably stuck it in the back of the wrong folder because I thought I had it with me in my hand and I didn't. Aha, here we are. Per therm, 54 cents per therm is, is the way it's measured. Okay. Yeah. 
but it's a crazy low, a low price. And I'm not a scientist that cannot explain what a therm is. Um, I can get it in writing and send it to you if that's all right. But I think that that is an absolute uh, must. Those, those prices haven't been that low for probably two or three years. Okay. Um, so if you would. Oh, it's a th okay. It's a unit of heat equivalent to 100,000 BTU. Thanks. I still don't know what that means, but. <laughs> uh, approximately the energy content of 100 cubic feet. No idea. Still don't know. So Heard what they do is they take all of the gas bills and they see what you're using right. for energy and then they yeah. right. do the math they and give you a price based on the therms that you used. Right. Yeah, how much energy it took to heat 100 cubic feet. Right. So this this, so this is, is this is a crazy low price. Fifty four cents to heat hundred cubic feet. Okay. If I understood that correctly. Uh, yes, I believe that is exactly what that means. Um, so I would recommend that you uh, approve the both energy contracts the one for the gas and for the electricity. And even though we'll be paying, I, I don't know what we'll be paying up to February, because with winter coming, it could skyrocket, but at least it'll be completely done for three years. That is at one 16 good thing, cents. is that you know what it's always doing. Like, right. and personally, I never lock into anything, just because I guess I kind of like, like to, gamble. To, to play, yeah, to roll I the know. dice on it, but. Yeah, I don't not. buy scratch tickets either because I can't. I just can't do it. Yeah. I know. I need to know. <laughs> nice. But it is a lot easier to plan and budget when you know exactly. Yeah. Right. How much you're going to pay over. A and, set period. and then fundamentally, if we if we have a set price for what it's going to cost us, then we can look at at conservation measures because I look up here and I don't think those are LEDs. We no, can look at conservation measures and and it's and that's first step. definitely um, a good step. I think our very first conservation measure should be insulation for this building. There is yes. zero yes. insulation. Yep. You walk up into the attic and it's nothing but rafters and roof. Yep. There's nothing. In the roof of this I wonder building. if, because yeah, I know National Grid through Mass Safe, they mm -hmm. do the stuff for homes. They we also had do them, them in, for they business. They never came back. Okay, yeah. <laughs> they never I, came I back. told them they, probably... they came in and they said we want to do LEDs, and I said LEDs are not the problem today. We need insulation because we need yeah. to contain the, the energy that, we that we're yeah. using. Yeah. Talk to me about insulation. Okay, they went up in the attic. They mm -hmm. did measurements. Never heard from them again. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, do we can we get a, somebody in prior to winter to see how much it would cost to do the? the we could, uh, but we don't necessarily have any funding for a project yeah. of that nature. I'm not sure if the town hall improvement company uh, committee is prepared to um, sacrifice be waylaid, the be waylaid and sacrifice their budget for this uh, because it was never mentioned to anyone. Yeah. But I agree that we do need to make energy conservation. Um, I was actually had Kathy looking for grants mm -hmm. of some nature, and even the green community grants won't let you put insulation in with their money. They just want you to do lighting. They don't want electricity. They want you switching over to non fossil fuels, regardless yep. of the cost. Yep. And and you know I've, I've dealt with that program in three different towns, and it's never saved a dime. No. Well. I guess my question is, can we get a quote so we at least know how much it is so that if nothing else we Well, we know how much it is today, but our budget isn't for another year, so what's it gonna, it, we'd be better off to find out how much it would be closer to budget time. Sure. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the way things are, the economy is, the price today may not be valid in three months or four months. Or, it or might be it valid. It definitely won't be valid by the time of town meeting, and we can't expect a company to lock in that price at this time. So, but that's another subject. So this is just like basically, do you want these to take these energy um, savings or? I think for the sake of predictability. Yeah, I, I'm on 
familiar with natural gas prices, as I don't use well, natural gas. It's, it's Electricity, all, it's I use all, solar. It's all very cyclic. It is just yeah, it's, but it's, it's it's all very cyclic, and, just, and, and we, had the same, we, the, we had the I same had charts question. Just, showing you what it's doing in Europe and what it's doing here. And yeah, I know it's going crazy. And how they track each other, and then it, it shows you by season and year over the last three years how it's gone, right. and it's gone like this. Pretty much going straight up. Yeah, it does yeah. weird steps. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. So um, the the un in particular, and the challenge is, right, is that natural gas is one of the things we do well, but with the Russians being all kind of crazy. So do we lock it years. in because we might not, the prices might be crazy because of supply and demand. Our, our supply is going overseas. So do we lock in the price? Right. Um, and where, where do we stand right now on the cost of our energy that comes from the solar farm like where does that fit is it roughly in the same category as how much they're asking for us for this so the way it works is our supplier we, we would still be paying for the energy from the solar fields mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those credits that we're buying mm -hmm. are then applied to the electric bill but it would be applied at the new rate as opposed to what the rate will be in February So the credits are still going to come off. Just at a different rate. Just at a, at a different rate. They're going to rate. come at the rate that we're, of what we're paying for our energy. Mm -hmm. Right. Of what that, the well, that rate is. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so unit for unit, we're still, it still it works the same way. It works exactly the same way. Okay. All right. I don't know how we say no fundamentally because if nothing else, the uncertainty factor is yeah. just is just abysmal. Yeah. I mean, two years from now, if for some reason, all of a sudden there's a glut on the energy market, we'll probably regret it. But hind, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Yeah, it just it makes planning easier. Yeah. Any comments from the attendees, all two of you? <laughs> I mean, what's going to go down? What? Well, energy, I, well, energy well the the the, the only reason why I'm hesitant. Uh, the only reason why I'm hesitant is the last time we signed a three-year contract, for whatever reason, magic happened and the energy market absolutely bottomed out and we wound up paying two to three X what the market rate was for two out of the three years. So the only reason I'm hesitant, even though I don't think that would be the case this time, is the fact that historically, you know, you know what, we're going to sign this because if there's any way to bring the, the energy prices down for the citizens of Brooklyn, this <laughs> might do it. This right? might do it. This <laughs> might do it. And keep in mind that this does not take effect until February, right. until the school's um, contract is over. Right. And they're on board with the, it. The natural gas will take, fa uh, will take effect in September. We pay their energy bill. So regardless, even in their contract they're in now, we pay their energy bill. Right. And for the elementary school. Correct. Right. Yeah. They're part of a, a group um, purchase for the school district, but we pay the bill, which we didn't even know they were part of, mm. even though it's our school and we pay the bill. This was discovered gonna, during is, the research for is, this. Is that going to, are, are they on board with swapping from their buying unit to our buying unit? Or do they not well, have a choice since we pay the bill? They, they don't actually have an option in this. And, and when we spoke with the um, facilities manager for the district, it doesn't impact their buying because we pay their bill. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So even though the district got the benefit of the rate, it didn't get reflected on Brookfield's bill because we pay the bill. So <laughs> no, 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 we're going to take them back. And Got use it. them to, to get advantage. a better rate for us for, for the rest of the town. Got it. So, okay, sounds like a plan. So, um, in in previous investigations into this building, the architects have indicated that these the type of structure of this wall, this brick wall, is not conducive to providing insulation. So when they do insulation calculations, they do what they call a heat loss study. And through a wall is one 
calculation. For a window is another. Windows typically are your biggest energy hog, and the ceiling or the roof is another calculation. I agree that we certainly should be insulating. The only good thing about the ceiling in this building is that it's three stories up and it's basically closed off, so there's not a lot of heat that makes it up there. I think this I think this roof structure is the only thing that could be insulated other than the windows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you completely. Yeah. But uh, so the windows are a big energy right. hog. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we have talked about on the committee going around in the fall and making sure that the windows are closed and locked <laughs> and the strong windows are down. I mean, that's typically mm -hmm. what you do at home. It's certainly what we have to do here. It's a, it's a minor way of saving, but it absolutely is necessary. But oh, I, I agree completely. But if we're to ever be able to refinish the upstairs at some point and use the upstairs, which we're making strides toward doing, we need to be able to retain the heat up there as well. Right. So I think insulating the roof is, is paramount to that process. Also have huge windows up there. Yes, they do. That, <laughs> that big room has some big old windows, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to replace those. Be a fortune okay. to replace it. it would windows be. that size. All right. Can we get a motion then yep. to accept the con energy contracts? I'll make a motion that we okay. accept the energy contracts. For a second. Three years. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. We've got two items of correspondence. Uh, yes. Excuse me. Can I go? I want to go back and visit the the uh, announcements that you made about committees. Yes. Was there an announcement about? The master plan committee? No. Is there a master plan committee? I thought that no. I thought that was voted on at the town oh dear. meeting to fund the new master plan. I'm gonna have some legal ramifications uh, Okay, so if I may, the master plan is updated under the law by the planning board. Um, I've been working with the planning board. They, they asked and, and delegated to me to seek quotes on updating the master plan, which we have. And so it's in the process of, of um, getting yeah, beyond we're, we're just the quote. Okay. So. I, I thought that there was a... And the quote came in within our budget, so I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to proceed. So it's, it's, I let the planning board know. Um, that that was where we were at, and so there's a plan uh, to update the plan. Discussed, it was discussed <laughs> at their meeting, their last meeting. Excellent. So, yeah, so I'm, work, I'm working. I'm working on because the master plan is like 12 years old or yeah. whatever. <laughs> something to that effect. Yeah. And it's a prerequisite for a lot of the grants that right. we want to pursue. So, so, so it's, we it's are actually, pursuing it. It's it's in motion. It's in and okay. the hazard mitigation plan is also being updated at the same time. We're looking at a grant to get that completed because it expires next year, so it should be updated prior to its expiration. Boy, this is where we're going to have it. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Look how fancy that is. <laughs> so. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So, um, all right, so correspondence. have a letter from Charter Communications regarding programming changes. So Spectrum LLC, Northeast LLC, Spectrum has been informed that on or around September 1st, TVG located on Spectrum channels 320 and 842 will rebrand as FanDuel TV and TVG2 located on Spectrum channel 327 will rebrand to FanDuel Racing. To review the current lineup, go to spectrum.com backslash channels. And if you have any questions, please call John Maher at charter.com 774-243-9735. And then uh, we are invited to the 100th birthday of East Brookfield, um, which they um, suspended 
um, five years of planned events back in 2020, so they're going to be doing their 100th anniversary a couple years late, uh, which is September 17th with a parade at 9.30. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, our board is welcome to join their parade and either walk or ride and carry a sign for the town of Brookfield. <coughs> Saturday. Yeah, do you have any interest in representing Brookfield in the East Brookfield celebration? I think they were seceding. I don't know if we really want to celebrate that. Yeah. <laughs> they did secede. They, they did secede, yeah. They did secede. And they successfully succeeded. Yeah. Seceded. So you can't even say it. <laughs> all the other Brookfields seceded. Yes, all the other Brookfields yeah. seceded. So. That's why I always get asked, where's I, I think South we can Brookfield? revisit. I don't know that I have a, a huge urge, but if we talk about it outside here and decide that we have to support I was going to be there on the sidewalk. <laughs> you should be but, there in the parade. So you need to be there in the parade. Represent. Last time I was in a you know, parade, I had to wear what? a tux. Even, so. even though they seceded, <laughs> we have a sisterhood with that town. We do. We do. And, and, you know, and that's we true. help each other. We do. And we work together. And we need each other. So there's absolutely... Nothing wrong with supporting their anniversary. No, there's, there's not. I was trying to be funny. So do, do we want to go ahead and march along? Sure. 1. We can ride in a car. Route. We can ride in a car. Everybody have a fancy car. I have a convertible. Ooh. Uh, let me rephrase that. I have access to a convertible. Access to a convertible. You guys can ride <laughs> behind like this. I just have a pickup. Right? And it smells get, like horse. That would be awesome. Y'all could ride in the back. We could ride in the yeah. back. Holding a big banner that yep. says Black Sabbath. No, wait. No. It says <laughs> Brookfield. Town of no, Brookfield. No, it would say Motley Crue. <laughs> yeah, Motley Crue supports East Brookfield. Happy so, anniversary. So. Um, but yeah, I think I think that actually think that it would be Kind of cool. It would be very, very. Um, Actually, the trailer. It would. It would be really nice if, if it was supported. Actually, you know what? I, I wonder. I wonder if the fire chief would let us borrow the brush truck. <laughs> <laughs> you need a special license. For no, you don't. you don't. It's okay. small. It's like it's like a it's a one ton pickup. It's like a yeah. It, it doesn't require a commercial driver's license. That's why I was thinking that. So. So yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll come up with a, a Brookfield Town we vehicle go. that we can that we we'll can do, do a float. Yeah. Well, you can use the water truck because the water truck is works very closely with these Brookfields. Oh, oh that's actually not we're, a bad we're idea. We're actually uh, just sending out a letter today uh, for a regional water commission meeting with East Brookfield, North Brookfield, and West Brookfield here in Brookfield, which is our fourth regional meeting to try to share common interest and understand the burdens of running that system. We all do the same thing, maybe a little differently, but right. you need to keep those down small, small systems working together. Mm -hmm. have, have it's we, very important that we, that we... So in, in spite of me, you, you brought me around full circle. Oh. Do any of the other department heads want to support the parade? That's a good question. They weren't invited, but we can ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does say Honorable yeah. Board of Selectmen. Right? It does it say Honorable just Board of Selectmen. That's correct. So I guess we could ask Larry Gordon if, you know, it, 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 do they really want just the selectmen or do they want anything else? Since we've got the well, water. Well, Linda isn't here. Point her go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but we'll we'll represent. We'll decide. Tell, let them know that we're it, probably they'll get at least two of us, and we don't know whether we're going to be walking or driving. Nice. But um, well done. We'll, we'll, we can we can consider that. Ooh, I was supposed to. I was actually supposed to be out of state that weekend. Are you Are you going to be here? I'll yeah. I'll have just gotten back from my business trip. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll be a little time groggy, but it'll be time groggy. Okay. okay. All right, and I haven't bought Just my follow ticket. follow the crowd. And I haven't bought and I haven't I haven't bought my ticket yet, so I may I may adjust. I will try to be there, but I need to see if I can get coverage. So okay, so we'll figure it out. Then maybe we'll do your convertible, but put the if you're if you're willing to drive, then we can. Unfortunately, my family's doing a um, golf tournament benefit that day, so, uh, so you can't. I will be 
you know, doing a roulette wheel selling okay. so we will chances to hit a marshmallow from the eighth tee. I got to pick up. <laughs> You've got to pick up. I got access to a pickup. You have access yep. to a pickup. We could ask Peter Mazuzo if, if, if yeah, I didn't, it, I didn't realize the what the date was. So. Yeah. Okay. So let them know we'll support. We don't know how many or whether we're walking or driving, but okay. we'll figure it out. I'll call Joe. So. All right. Anything else? There's nothing else in the packet. So can I get it a, a motion to adjourn yep. at 725? I'll make a motion to adjourn at 725. I'll, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.